lot. I've listened to so much crap in the last two weeks. Hey, buddy. You know, you hear all that crap, but I understood that that crap was going to come with the territory. Hey, buddy. But I'll live with the crap. Buddy. And uh, I feel very good. He's a disgruntled Scottish guard known for his lethal temper and his unusual eating habits. He weighs a metric ton. His name, Fat Bastard. One of the things, Mike, that's been pointed out over the course of today and last night after the game is that you seem resigned to the fate after the game, that there wasn't much fire in you, and you sort of stood up before the media and said, well, you know, this is the way it is. We uh, Are you resigned to this fate? Is well, you're, you're the same guy that wrote about me when I did have the fire, that that was the wrong thing to do. So who are you crapping? Well, I'm just Don't asking. Don't me now. No, no, no. Just so you know. And it is the D time for who you cram it in. 505 on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score boards and birds did. I love to keep it simple. Limit this to something someone said, not something someone did. Oh, look. We start with Gary in Evanston on who you cram it on the score. Uh oh. Hi, guys. I live only about a mile from where Joe from Evanston said he lives. <laughs> a stone's throw from Quicken Loans <laughs> Arena. I wonder what Joe thinks of UPN Bonanza. Anyway, in her article yesterday on Kate Gosselin being kicked off Dancing with the Stars, sometimes TV critic Paige Weiser wrote the following. Quote, the network probably would have delayed Glee to see Gosselin completely break down, but it did not come to that. Well, it would have been very difficult for that network to delay Glee, since Dancing with the Stars is on ABC and Glee is on Fox. Paige no doubt confused Dancing with the Stars with American Idol, which is actually on Fox and does immediately precede Glee on Tuesday nights. <laughs> is, is it asking too much for a TV critic for a major newspaper to at least know which network carries which shows, especially shows as popular as those, even if they are bad? Page Wider, who are you crapping? <laughs> even if they are bad. Weird. Even if they are bad. I love Gary. <laughs> he's right, though. I saw the same thing. He's, he's right on it. This is from Schmutzy. Just as Dan Bernstein was signing off after another grueling five-hour shift, he mentioned that this is going to be a tough night of TV. We've got the Sox playing and the Cubs playing. I've got my split-screen recording thingy programmed in. It was at this point that Terry mentioned it's an 8 o'clock start for the hockey game. Oh, boy. Well, naturally, Dan replied, oh, yeah, this is going to be a late night. Dan didn't say, yeah, it's going to be a late night as most hardcore sports fans might say, with a smile and an exclamation point. No, no, no. Dan said in more of a, oh, man, it's going to be a late night. Hey, Dan, the 8 o'clock hockey game will probably be the latest finish. And what's the latest it could be? Say it goes in a triple overtime and lasts until midnight. That would still leave you 14 hours before you have to be back at work, Rip Van Wanker. Isn't that enough downtime? What are you, a three-toed tree sloth? And before you give me the old, but I have to wake up and do the thing with the kids, wah, 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 let me remind you, there are a couple of million true sports fans in this city who will be making that same bleary-eyed trek in the morning on five or six hours of sleep, and they'll be happy! Because they had one of those long nights. That's what sports fans do when we have two teams in the playoffs and two Major League Baseball teams trying to get out of the gate. We watch our games. We lose a little quality time in the land of Nod. And here's the real kicker. We don't talk about sports for a living. Don't you dare tell me you weren't whining like a fat kid who lost his cake because I'll have a bat of cola cue the tape up so fast it'll wake you from your nap. You still with me, Bernstein? You haven't nodded off while you were reading this. Well, assuming you haven't put your little black silk sleep goggles on yet, sit up for one second and answer me this. Bernstein, who you crapping? Wow. Also, so long it delayed the start of Glee. <laughs> Jason in Waukesha, Wisconsin's on the score. Hello, boys. Hello. Yeah, take that, Bernstein. <laughs> hey, happy, uh, happy Earth Day, by the way. Happy hey, Earth Day to hey, yes, you. Happy Earth Day. Um, this crap goes out to progressive talk show host Mike Malloy, whom I normally agree with, but recently he let loose with a real doozy. 
Uh, he stated that, and I quote, all Republicans in Washington are cowards and none of them have served in the military. Oh, oh my. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, I thought it was just a little obscure little event that happened about a year and a half ago called the presidential election in which the Republican candidate was John McCain. And uh, I'm pretty sure he served in the military and pretty sure he was a prisoner of war. And I'm not sure coward is a label that I would uh, ascribe to him. So, Mike Malloy, who are you crapping? That's, that's the PD calls you into the office that's, and says, what? That may be a little bit much. The Bark of Normal says, on the Today Show, Meredith Vieira was interviewing a 13-year-old boy who was climbing Mount Everest. The reason for the interview is that no youth has ever climbed Mount Everest before. During the interview, Meredith asked the boy's father, who's climbing the mountain with his 13-year-old son, has anyone this young ever climbed Mount Everest before? <laughs> huh? Isn't this the reason for the interview? That no kid has climbed Everest before? Huh? Meredith, maybe you should have asked her, are you experiencing any altitude sickness? <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should have the 13-year-old boy who's trying to become the first boy to climb Mount Everest ask you, who you crapping? <laughs> Southside Ron, you're on the score. Hey, look here, speaking of John McCain, on Sunday on Fox News, Chris Wallace read a, a recent quote attributed to him where he said, no, I'm not a, a maverick and never have been. To contradict the statement, Chris showed him at a rally with Sarah Palin when he said, well, if you all want a maverick, vote for me. So when, when Chris said, well, you know, are, are you trying to get away from the maverick label because you're facing some stiff conservative competition? He said, oh, no, 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 just call me a true America. Hey, John, I'm going to call you. You a crusty, lying, gray-haired bastard. Who are you crap? Wow, ouch. <laughs> you don't have to say that. <laughs> he did, though. Yeah, he did. He, he, he did. Get on oh. back there. Yeah, you know, it's, I, we, we were getting... I, I think we should go back to no political craps. It's just going to get back to the, the same garbage that's going to make everybody mad. So, no more of that. We don't, it, there, there, there's enough elsewhere, I think, that we don't have to do political, politically motivated crap. I, I'm going to do some, though. Well, you may. From time to time. You're, yeah, you're a talk show host. You're allowed and, uh, to... Well, and an why. Don't forget that part of it. I, you said that. I didn't. Here's one from the Beverly Brewmaster. Tony yes. La Russa, halfway through what would become a 20-inning loss to the Mets, he pulled an 0-for-5 Matt Holiday. And without Holiday's protection, the Mets repeatedly walked Albert Pujols and extras. And defending his decision, La Russa referred to Holiday's slump and said, I think it's kind of criminal to leave him in the game. Criminal, Tony? That's an interesting choice of words. It's been a few years since I took criminal law, but here are some actions that a zealous prosecutor might claim are criminal. Looking the other way while employees under your supervision abuse illegal substances, falling asleep drunk behind the wheel of your car. Looking the other way again while employees at a new job site abuse illegal substances. <laughs> Looking the other way while an employee habitually drives under the influence and eventually <laughs> kills himself driving drunk and threatening reporters with a fungo bat if they don't report on that employee's death the way you'd like them to. <laughs> now, so maybe some of those actions didn't expose you to criminal liability, but they're much closer to criminal conduct than leaving an 0-for-5 player in a game in extra innings. Just ask Jerry Manuel, who had two of his players go 0-for-7 that night. Last time I checked, Jason Bay, still alive. But real <laughs> crimes have real victims, like Josh Hancock. So, Tony, do me a favor. If you have some notion of what's criminal and what's not in that martini-marinated brain of yours, use it to look out for the well-being of those around you instead of covering your ass. Who you crapping? <laughs> I knew you'd like that one. I do. I yeah, anytime. <laughs> Trash can man and Gary, you're on the score. Gentlemen, my life for you. Uh, 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 can't say that. Can't say that on the radio. Sorry, bud. No. Sorry. 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 Joel from Montgomery says earlier this week during interviews with several Pittsburgh players in response to the Ben Roethlisberger fiasco, a rather articulate Aaron Smith had this to say when questioned about the troubled quarterback's conduct. He's a fun guy. Likes to joke around and have a good time. He's easy to get along with. I never had any problems with him. Like a big kid kind of hanging out. Well, the truth is he is kind of like a big kid. A big kid that apparently likes to rape people. Mr. Smith, you are in no way making a case for defending this disgusting human being by referring to the college boy moments you cherish with him. Roethlisberger's potential to commit a sex crime has nothing to do with how fun he is or his ability to hang out with you. He's hanging out. He hangs out real well, though. 
if you want to be friends with this jerk, that's fine. Just don't try to convince other people that he can't be a sexual predator because he's just so much fun. You are in violation of the NFL's conduct policy for being an idiot. Aaron Smith, who you crapping? Hey, little bird, tell me, Kun, I'd like to make a sex crime. High five! I'm still working on the gray part of it. <laughs> In Waterloo. Literally. It's Spiegel's annoying laugh on who you're crapping on the score. Hi, boys. Hi. Oh. Mike Cliff found time to play psychologist this week, first explaining that Big Ben lost his mother at age eight. Then he said, quote, which is why his conduct is so shocking, until you consider all the love, discipline, and kindness isn't going to bring back his mom. So anyone who's lost a parent can act like an arrogant Deutsche Bank and whip Mr. Ashy out anytime he pleases? Instead of playing child psychologist, tell us exactly how Kyle Orton makes defenses better. Get your mouth shut, dumbass cracker, and who you crapping? All right. Oh, oh this, this is our guy, isn't it? This is Richie in Olympia Field. It is our guy. On who you crapping, on the score. Beware. How you guys doing? Good, Richie. Now, this this crap goes out to Pope Benedict, who, by the way, since the last two popes were called John Paul, should have been called, called Pope George Ringo. But my, hey, crap, hey. but my crap goes out to him. In the, about two or three weeks ago, there was a, an item in the news brought up about two pedophile priests, and Pope Benedict said... Well, you know, that happened 20 years ago, and he was just hearing about it now. Come on, Mr. Pope. You got, you got, do you think people really believe that you're just hearing about this now? Don't you think that the, that the Cubs have a better chance of winning the World Series? Or better yet, don't you think Ron Sano has a better chance of playing or being third base? Pope, who are you crapping? Chicago Tough. Mr. Pope, Mr. Pope. <laughs> hey, Mr. Pope. That's <laughs> our Maddie Gustano, too. I don't know what it is. <laughs> We're in the midst of who you crap at 312 644 67 Come on out and play, you. <laughs> Mr. Pope, Mr. Pope. Chicago Sports. 670. Ah, uh, We are in the midst of who you crap here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score pours and burns speed at 312 644 67 67. Here is Mr. C in St. Charles, not to be confused with Mr. Pope on the score. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello. How are we doing? All right. <laughs> it's my first crap here. Good luck with your first crap. Thank you. This Pat, this goes out to this crap goes out to Mr. Pat Boyle from Fox Sports Net on Sunday during the Hawks Preds intermission. And I quote Pat said, Let's go. We got four other games on the Stanley Cup playoff slate this day. We go to the Joe Lewis Arena where the Hawks and Coyotes are tied at a game of peace. Well Pat, if the Hawks were playing the Coyotes, we'd be in round two of the playoffs. So who you crapping, you jabroni? Good Lord. I also gave him a new job. Unemployed lawyer in Lakeview. It says, Casey Johnson sat in the Pax and Del Negro fight story and ultimately lost the scoop. In his Ask the Reporter segment last week, Johnson said he made the decision to withhold the information, quote, less because of the flow of information, it was more for a humane reason. Maybe this was a typo. Humane means having or showing compassion or benevolence and inflicting the minimum of pain. Wouldn't the humane choice be to report a physical assault instead of ignoring it and enabling such acts in the future? But beyond that, you need to stop playing journalism make-believe. You're a beat reporter. You don't cover wars. If you were embedded, you could withhold the location of troops. There are other legitimate reasons to sit on big stories, but most of those involve either getting an imminent bigger story or protecting the well-being of innocent victims. The reason you held the Pax and Del Negro fracas was to avoid rocking the boat. So your vanilla sources could give you vanilla stories about the lousy basketball team. Casey Johnson, who you crapping? Well, and the thing is, and then Vinny, he was, remember, Casey said he was protecting Vinny, or the respect to Vinny, and then who leaked the story? Vinny. Yeah, I, I don't know. In Deerfield, the outlaw Soupy Sales is who you crapping on the score. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello, Hello Soupy. 
Well, in, but this goes out to Ron Sano. On the Cubs broadcast on Sunday, Ron and Pat were talking about where Ron gets his toupees styled. And Pat asked Ron, Ron, you've been going to the same stylist for several years now, haven't you? And Ron said, no, Pat, I've been going for two years. So according to the Webster definition, Ron, several is any number greater than one. Two would be that first number, Ron. So, Ron Sano, who you crapping? You know, we're reaching now, aren't we? We're uh, we're leaking oil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think we've we've hit a little debris on the track, and it's there's also a chance we might have killed a spectator. So we're going to have to regroup. Paul and Barrington says last night after showing somewhat mediocre stats from Carlos Zambrano's earlier Cubs bullpen stint, Len Casper said it's not fair to use these statistics as an example because Carlos has matured a lot since then. <laughs> really? Maybe he's thinking of Carlos's mature encounter with the Gatorade dispenser <laughs> or the number of times he's maturely broken a bat over his knee. Or when he maturely punched his teammate in the face. <laughs> or when he repeatedly and maturely shows up his teammates who make errors. When stop making excuses. Who you crapping? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, doggies. Ooh, doggies. All righty. Well, we didn't hit any more debris just then. And this one, I'm surprised it, it took so long to come in here. But this one is from Cap Boso's Sod Chunk. Okay. So this goes out to Simeon High School coach Robert Smith and AAU coach Mike Irvin. After DePaul head coach Oliver Purnell announced his staff, reactions from these two buffoons were quick to pour in. Irvin was quoted as saying, you want to send the car, but you don't want us to drive the car. That's a public league thing. You don't want to hire anyone for the public league, but you want the public league players. Robert Smith, who was previously quoted as having the product, offered the following. It's not public league versus DePaul. It's personally for me having our guys go somewhere that's good for me and for them to be around people they're comfortable with. I'm not going to help them with anything. As far as our gym, they'll have to see us somewhere else. Now, the BS with high school and AAU coaches in this town is nothing new, and Mike Irvin's probably peeved that his brother Lance wasn't offered a job, as well as Robert Smith feeling jilted that his guy Tracy Webster was not retained. Funny thing is, neither Smith nor Irvin has a history of sending either Lance Irvin or Tracy no. Webster their star products. No. Whatever the reasons behind the statements above, one thing is abundantly clear. These two coaches are nothing but con men that perceive DePaul as another deep-pocketed mark to take advantage of. I suggest they trade in their coaching whistles and jogging suits for canes and feathered fedoras, because your ridiculous statements reveal you to be nothing more than the pimps you are. So, Robert Smith, Mike Irvin, who are you crapping? I am told it is time right now to check the manometer. Oh, I am checking, and I think... I don't think you're going to get this one because this was a really a side trip that I don't think you were aware of. The Isle of Man? No, Manitowoc. Damn! I thought I, I had I, one. I was I, thinking outside the box. I, I thought I thought possibly you'd gone to Great and Britain the bug. and you'd seen <laughs> the Isle of Man. You lived in the I, sand at the Isle uh, of Man. And you know I love Man United. Yes. Um, but but no, I'm sorry. I knew that was a tough one. I'm sorry. Sorry. And nobody closes out who you're crapping like Quad Cities Pat on the score. Hello, boys. Hello. <laughs> this crap goes out to Nadia Suleiman, properly known as the Octomom. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey earlier this week, she said that she doesn't like to be called Octomom because it makes her sound like a circus freak. I'll let that go. What really bothered me was that while cameras were following around her and her children and the paparazzi trying to film her children, she told Oprah, I would never put my children on a reality show. That would be abusive. Hmm. Seems like Oprah's pretty real when her cameras are following you around all day and probably giving you money for it. Nadia Suleiman, who are you crapping? Oh, God. You make us wonder with the things you Oh, boy. We are leaking oil. I think our tire was flat. Buddy. A little debris might have killed a spectator or two. Hey, buddy! Who you crap? <laughs>